Hey folks, in this session, we're going to be looking at how to create custom activities on teacher.desmos.com. Now, obviously on the left hand side here, you can't really see the custom activities. So to actually create your own custom activities, you need to sign in, right? When you click on sign in, you're going to come up with this particular box here. Sign in with your Google account. Uh, if you are not a Google school and don't have a Google account, then I'd say just use your personal account. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way to go about it. But okay, so once you sign in, you should get to a screen that actually looks like this. And suddenly there's that extra uh, three uh, tabs that you can actually see, which is called your activities, bookmark, custom, and history. Now, already you guys should, you're probably used to the idea that there's heaps of activities already that's been built in. Uh, if you want to search for an activity, just click on this box, type in an activity, and then you'll find it. But anyway, today we're looking at custom activities. So what you want to do is you want to click on custom. And obviously these are the ones that I've created earlier. But the one that we're going to be looking at is this particular button that says new activity. So you click on new activity. There we go. All right, so we've got welcome to activity builder. Or what you want to call this activity. Now I'm going to call this uh, and just click on start building. Okay, so this is the main screen that you're going to be working out of. Um, it's kind of very similar in a way to how PowerPoint is set up. You know, you've got that slides on the left hand side, and then you've got your six things that you could potentially use uh, in those little slides that you can think of. Um, what else? Uh, details. So, if you want to just put a picture of what the task looked like, and um, obviously a little title here, I'm going to say. Um, And obviously, you can make the activity public. Um, so when you make the activity public, that means anyone can actually find your activity and use it. But if you want to keep it private, then you just uncheck it. And that basically means that only you get to know where this activity is. All right, so let's go to the actual screens area. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what each of these things do and a couple of tricks that you can actually do. OK, so in this first screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say write an equation for the graph below. Okay, so obviously you want to put a graph, um, a graph in there. Now, so let's say we want the kids, uh, I want the kids to be able to draw this particular graph here. So I'm going to use uh, x squared for example. No, maybe not x squared. Let's go x squared plus one. But what I want to do is I want um, I want the student to actually draw this graph, but obviously they can actually see the graph equation here. So what I need to do is I need to hide it. So if I want to hide it, um, I create a folder, right, and I just drag this folder to the top line there, and see how it says enter a note, uh, and then it says hide this folder from students. So this is the trick part that you guys need to watch. So see how this little four arrow comes up? You click on it, and then just move it till you see this little, see how there's a little, white line just coming there. You can see it now. Uh, and what that means is it's actually lined up with that folder. Basically, the next step you could do is you could actually hide this folder from students. So this is what it looks like for the teacher, but for the student, and this is a really good way to check what the student is constantly looking at, is by pressing this preview button. If you click on the preview button, this is what the student is seeing. So it says write an equation for the graph below. And as you can see, there is nothing written here. So they can actually try it out. So they can go y to the x squared. Oh, OK, that doesn't make sense. And they can kind of play around with it. So that's what that student screen preview is. And one other thing that I like to do to make it a bit easier is I click on the settings button and just change that from a, a straight line to maybe like a dashed line or a dotted line, whatever it is that you guys like. Um, so there you go. And so that's what it looks like for you guys as teachers, but when the students have, have a look at it, they're going to look at it something like this. So at this point, the, then you can actually have, oh, yep, so the student puts in y equals x squared. Uh, it doesn't work. Plus one. There you go. The graph matches. Cool. So that's the first uh, thing that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, the next screen. So we're going to go to the next screen. Uh, this time, we're going to say we can use the sketch tool. So in sketch tool, 
uh, they can sketch anything. I mean, they can actually use it as a board if they want. But what I like to do is I like to ask kids to draw, um, you know, this coordinates is a good one to do. So in terms of background, you've got the white background, or you could actually have an editable graph or custom image. So you can actually put an image in there and get kids to actually, you know, draw over it or play over it or whatever it is that you want to do. So my one I'm going to use is editable graph. And I'm going to leave it like this. So what is it? What just leaving it like this? If you have a look at preview, this is what the kids can actually see. Uh, what can they do with it? They can actually draw straight lines. They can free draw things that they want to. Uh, but obviously, I want to have it with a purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little little note at the top. Uh, okay, real simple. So let's go have a look at the preview screen. What it looks like. So draw a line connecting 0, 5, and 3, negative 1. Um, so you've got a line. I'm going to put a point first at 0, 5. There's my point. Uh, my second point is going to be at 3, negative 1. There's my second point. All right, and then I can say, okay, draw a line. So there you go. I got my line that is actually drawn through. That's something that you guys can actually do as well. So that's... For what do we what do we call this? This was uh, sketching sketching tool. Um, now let's look at uh, student input tool. So student input, like you could actually ask a question. Uh, for example, I'm gonna so to ask a question, you click on note. So in this note, I'm gonna say uh, the coefficient of x squared. Now when I do this, see how that's x squared? You write it like this. Uh, you can actually click on function of fx, so I don't write it like that, but I click on f of x first, and I get that little square in there, and I can just go x squared like this, and that looks a lot prettier. Uh, what is the coefficient of x squared? And I'm going to call it um, x squared plus 2x minus 1. So that's what my note is. So if I look at preview, this is what it's going to look like. So obviously, I want the kids to actually write some answers in. So you've got two things you can actually do. You can actually do input. All right. Input, they write the answer straight away. So if they go to preview, it's going to look like this. And they write, they write the answer and submit to class. You can also have it instead of input. You could actually have multi-choice. With multi-choice, you just have your options there. So you've got three, you've got two, and you've got minus four. And if you go into preview again, uh, so they've actually got like multi-choice. And then, of course, they can do the explanation of answer as well. Um, that's because we've actually chosen multi-choice explain. But if we do simple, then they just select the button and that's it. That's all they do. Um, Multi-select, so you have like a couple of options. So go to preview. So they can actually play, pick more than one, select all that apply. So in my one, I'm going to keep it as explain and leave it as it is. Okay, so there we go. That's a really good example of how to use multi-choice um, in um, Student Desmos. One more screen. This one, I'm going to say, uh, what can we do? You guys can actually put graphs and choice. Like, for example, you can actually have a graph, and you could have a note and a choice. So in this screen, what I could say is, uh, I'm going to draw a graph. So I've got this graph, y equals x squared plus 2. Uh, and then here you can say, um, choose the equation of the graph. And you can have explain or just go, uh, I'm just going to go simple. But see, now you want to put an equation. So if you go y equals x squared, it's again going to look that ugly way. So what you're going to do is you're going to press that f of x. And you can write it as y equals x squared. Add another option. Put an f of x y equals x squared plus 3. Uh, put another option, y equals x squared. Oops, I made that mistake. So put that as a function, y equals x squared uh, plus 2. So now when you click on preview, this is what the students will actually see. So students see the graph. They've got to use the equation of the graph below, and they can click on it and submit to the teacher. Uh, what else can you do? Uh, this plus sign just keeps adding screen guys. That's basically it. Um, next one I'd like to do is multi-choice with graphs. 
So for example, you can have a note uh, and just say, choose the graph, for example, choose the graph, y equals to 2x minus 3, and go to the multi-choice. But instead of choices with simple choice, what I can actually have, like you can actually have images or you can have graphs. I'm going to have graphs, so I'm going to put y equals 2x minus 3, that's my first one. So hopefully you can see that's the first option. Then I could have a second option. Uh, this time I'm going to go y equals 2x plus 3. Uh, and you can keep going. You know, you can have, I think, I'm not sure how many options you can really have, but um, let's see. 2x minus 3. Done. Keep going down. Add another graph. Uh, y equals to negative 2x plus 3. And done. And now if I click on preview, this is what the kids are going to see. So choose the graph of well, choose the graph of y equals 2x minus 3. So they got to kind of go, well, which one is it? Um, also, guys, one other thing to remember, the show students their classmates' response. You can actually tick it off if you don't want the students to share their answers. Otherwise, what you're going to have, what's going to happen is when they click on preview, well, when they go to their screen, at the bottom here, all the other students' answers will start popping up. Um, so it really depends on your style of teaching. I mean, if you want other kids to see the answers and you can put it up, it's, yeah, it's entirely up to you. I think it's the same thing here. All of these um, student input screens, they have students choose, um, show students their classmate responses. Okay, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the preview of the, okay, we're going to look at the preview of the whole thing that we worked on so far. So our first screen, this is what it looked like. Write an equation for the graph below. Our second screen was a something that where they can actually draw, so they can pre-draw uh, on their graph. Third thing is putting in multi-choice. Fourth thing is um, multi-choice with the graph that's on the left-hand side. Of course, remember, guys, you could put an image in there, so don't just think graphs. You can actually think of other things as well. I've, I mean, the possibilities are endless with this type of tool that we have here. Um, five, we've got a question and we've got pictures or graphs to actually choose from for the answer. Uh, and that's basically it for this session, guys. So what are the ideas that I can tell you is just click on next and you go make my activity public. I'm going to click it. Um, well, I'm going to make it public for now and just go done. When you click on done, that's your custom activity all good to go. So if you want to create your own class code for that particular custom activity, just click on your class code. And there's the dashboard, and there's the class code, which you can actually share with the students and go ahead and try it out. So if you want to try this as a student, uh, this particular activity, you go to student.desmos.com. And um, yeah, that's basic, this class code, and then have a go with it. Cool. Guys, that's basically it for this really quick session on uh, Teacher Desmos. Uh, this as I said, this, this is the first time I've actually made something for teachers. Uh, thank you for all your hard work out there, and hopefully this is something that will just help your uh, classroom teaching a little bit better. But um, please don't forget to subscribe and share this video to other teachers if you can. And also I'll add a link to the, uh, to the descriptions, which has uh, teacher Desmos activities that's actually created uh, by our department at Ormiston Senior College. And, um, you know, Feel free to use those uh, tasks, people. And um, if you have any tasks that you've created and would like to add to the library, then uh, I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to share this with the uh, rest of the teachers around the country. All right, guys, that's it from me. Thank you for watching.